Um, I just have a single slide, so this should go pretty fast. Um, this kind of just builds on what we spoke about earlier. I, I was, you know, we were tasked with kind of identifying kind of our three biggest research areas. Um, I kind of grouped them into three, um, you know, those, those are the three main bullets here. So, so one is just kind of better understanding longer term sustainability of intervention effects. Again, I think this is a potentially major advantage of non-pharmacological treatments, especially those that address coping um, and function. Um, as, so, so this means more studies with longer term follow-up. As I showed you earlier, very few studies had one year or longer follow-up. Most of those were for exercise and psychological therapies. So, um, you know, designing the studies specifically to, to look at that, uh, how a course of treatment impacts uh, those longer term outcomes. Uh, we need to see what happens to opioid use, right? So there's a lot of postulations about how using non-pharmacological therapies may impact, reduce, or prevent use of opioids. Um, this just hasn't been measured in most trials. We tried to look at this and there were maybe five studies that reported any uh, opioid use related outcomes. So really very difficult uh, to tell at this time. Um, one of the problems of course is that many of those trials exclude people uh, who are on opioids or restrict them to you know low doses, et cetera. Uh, we'd like to see better standardization of the interventions in order to interpret the studies more. Um, so this doesn't mean that you can't investigate novel techniques or investigate, you know, novel intensities or durations of therapies, but you should at least have an, another kind of standard intervention arm, you know, eight to ten weeks or whatever of exercise, whatever is kind of considered the standard exercise. You can certainly look at other types of exercise, other types of massage, acupuncture, etc., but it's just very difficult for us to be able to um, say much about um, optimal techniques when we have such poor standardization. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, we have very few comparisons of non-pharmacological versus pharmacological interventions, um, and it would be um, nice to see some of those. Um, many people have uh, alluded to this uh, uh, targeting of therapies. Can we individualize treatments better? Can we identify that, you know, 20% of patients who are going to do better with a certain therapy and actually target them and maybe get beyond kind of these average small effects? That's been kind of an uh, open question for the last, you know, 10 or 20 years. Um, this is um, difficult. Uh, we've already talked about many challenges, uh, all the different comparisons and comparators, etc. cetera. Um, and um, I, I think that big data approaches and observational studies are great. I mean, we often focus on RCTs because we're just trying to figure out, in, in our reviews, because we're trying to figure out what works or not to begin with. Um, but um, we can certainly leverage those types of analyses as well. Um, the studies do need to look at some of these subpopulations that we have a lot of interest in, including people with substance use disorders, adolescents, older adults, uh, people with central sensitization, et cetera, um, racial, ethnic minorities, all of this, as I mentioned earlier, is lacking. Um, and then this uh, implementation stuff that we need to um, um, look at how, how to implement um, uh, these in practice uh, and look at policy effects, uh, policy efforts to enhance access. Um, you know, they, they're, they're, they're practice-based approaches. There's also systems-based approaches if you think about the, you know, addiction um, world uh, where they do like hub and spoke models or the tele, you know, the echo project with telecare and things like that. There are, there are many different ways to implement these both on a, you know, practice-based level as well as on larger systems-based levels and, and we need data to look at that. And this is just uh, a, a mention of a study that's going on in Oregon um, uh, to look at uh, the Medicaid policy um, and how it relates to use of opioids for back pain. Uh, so I'll just end there. Thanks.